Right. Good evening, um, listeners or viewers. We are so glad to have you again. This is the Church of Nazarene Barbados District Family Forum, and uh, we do hope you had a great day. Uh, this we are in the month of March. Imagine that how fast the year has flown. Mm -hmm. Well, um, last Sunday we focused on topic of substance abuse and its impact on the family, and today is a second program in that series and. As was said last week, um, we are especially glad to have with us our special guest, Mrs. McKenna Bourne, Substance Abuse Prevention Officer. Glad to have you again today. Thank you very much, Reverend Farley. I appreciate the sacrifice you've made to share with us. And of course, Reverend Kelman, our co-host. A very pleasant evening to you. And um, again, we're looking forward to a very stimulating discussion on a topic that I believe everyone needs to hear because if you've not yet been touched by it, uh, so you know someone who has been mm -hmm. and therefore you can provide for them information that could be useful. So, so come out, you know, um, gather around, call someone and let's have a, a wonderful time interacting uh, with a topic that we need to, to be able to deal with. Well, I believe I need to say a few things about um, Mrs. Bourne, so you know who is sharing with us. Mrs. Bourne, of course, as I said, is a substance abuse prevention officer, and um, she has designed and implemented many programs for the adolescents and the family over the past 12 years um, through the National Council of Substance Abuse. Where she works, she coordinates programs for children suspended from school, for example, um, special needs children, hearing impaired youth and adults, and prevention for his family program, special program that she um, conducts. And uh, she's passionate about working with families and those who feel that they are lost, they are lost. There's a sense of um, hopelessness. And uh, I believe her, all, her philosophy is try to return hope to those who perhaps, especially those who have abused drugs, want to get them, their lives back together. And we want to thank you and the Council of Substance Abuse for doing a fine job. The job is a difficult one, but we thank you for the great work you do. Thank you. All right, we want to just say a prayer this morning and we'll come back with you. Father, we thank you again for this occasion where we can connect with our public, listening public, especially focusing today on the area of family um, as it relates to some abuse and its impact on the family. And we are praying that if there are persons out there, persons who are listening to us, who have been impacted, that they would sense have a sense of hope even through this program and realize that healing is possible to the help of God. We give you thanks, Lord, for your guidance this evening, for Christ's sake. Amen. And just before I, we go to pray, I just want to read this verse. Two verses from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, verse 7 says, We have this treasure in jars, of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Yes, there are persons who may be impacted negatively by um, through the abuse of drugs and. Uh, but the, the passage does say that we are like a jar, so to speak. But within the jar, if we can get a hold of the, make that connection with God, um, indeed God can repair the, the jar, jars that are marred and uh, bring wholeness again. And we know that this is part of the function of the National Council of Substance Abuse is to bring wholeness to persons who have, whose lives have been marred by the abuse of drugs. 
Yeah. And let me just interject here a little further um, to say that uh, your comments are, are very much on point from the perspective that uh, we now know that many of the substance abuse programs that have a strong spiritual base um, tend to be very successful. Um, so so the, 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 the reality of having you know, God being a part of your healing process um, does have um, great benefits in terms of substance abuse. Amen. So in true God, we, we can't do it in ourselves. Mm -hmm. True God, there's hope. Mm -hmm. So we back with you in a moment, all right? <laughs> the Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Welcome back to you. Um, we are so glad again to have with us uh, Ms. Bourne. And um, she's going to share with us again this evening on some of the less talk about drugs, but are still very present in our society um, and uh, how they can in fact influence uh, persons. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Borden. Thank you so much, Reverend Cameron. Thank you, Reverend Freddie, for once again inviting the National Council on Substance Abuse to be a part of this program. We are happy to be here with you and the viewers out there in TV land. Thank you for tuning in. Feel free to call a friend. The last time we were here, we mentioned that the drug of choice in Barbados is mainly marijuana. That is the one presenting mostly for treatment. However, we also have alcohol, we have tobacco, we have crack cocaine. That is what making the top list know that persons in our society are choosing to use. We also mentioned that drugs does not look at whether um, you have money or not. It does not look at your social class. It doesn't look at your ethnicity. <laughs> it doesn't look at your religious background. It just is one of those phenomena that when chosen to use, it can impact the individual, their family, as well as their community. And I want to put in here the church as well, which is a part of the community, and the church is a family. So that is something that we, we discussed last Sunday. And now we want to go in a bit more as it relates to some of those drugs you do not hear about too often, but that are present in our society. One of those first drugs that uh, is here, but is not normally mentioned, is something known as Rohypnol. Now, Rohypnol is something that is part of what they call the club drugs. It is one of those tablets. It comes in a tablet form most of the time, or a little powder form. And it is something when put in any liquid, it dissolves rapidly. And it does not change the way the drink looks, it tastes, or it smells. So unless a person in that couple seconds sees the dissolve action happening, they would never know that their drink was spiked. Once this is consumed, that person is no longer in control of themselves. And the person who chose to spike that drink usually have the intention to want to rape that person. Mm -hmm. And we want the person to know that rape is not just male on female, but you have female to female. You have cases where um, male on male happens as well. Rape can happen as long there is, according to law, any form of penetration, right? And those who are still trying to figure out, yes, with the male, penetration as it re relates to their, their illness, and that goes into a different law here in Barbados as well. We also have on the club just something known as ecstasy. Ecstasy. Now these are something that look like sweeties. Mm -hmm. The thing is with ecstasy is that it is hard to trace because manufacturers, the drug dealers, they're always changing how it looks. Yeah. It may look like a bunny today, tomorrow they may print it and it look like a nice banana shape. We don't know. But person who choose to use this ecstasy pill, they use it mostly in club drugs or in, in club settings. Mm -hmm. And this is this is one thing that when they choose to use it, it makes them go and 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 bounce and bounce and that's and that's and that's. What happens then is mostly time it causes dehydration. And once in a club setting, most person go for what? 
alcohol mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. So alcohol on top of ecstasy that is something to make your brain and your body go quickly, and then you're drinking something that's supposed to be going slow, that in itself can cause persons to block out, not to remember. It causes short-term memory loss. Uh, persons don't know what happened uh, because of the, the cocktail. So we have a number of drugs in those settings that persons have to be careful. We always tell persons who are choosing to buy a drink, buy one, open it in, in, in your presence. Do not leave it uncovered. If you leave it, discard yeah, it. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. uh, as much as possible, safeguard yourself when you go out. And I know they're talking about um, not just club, but anywhere, yes. anywhere. Oh, hmm. It is important to safeguard what you choose to put inside of your body. Those are two on the club drugs. Uh, we want to touch a bit about vaping. Yes. Uh, vaping is something that is becoming popular among young people across the globe. This started off as part of a treatment plan where it was supposed to help persons who are already addicted to nicotine mm -hmm. to decrease their nicotine intake to the point that they are no longer addicted or their brain is not addicted to the chemicals. And then that counselor will help them with the behavioral aspect. So Reverend Kemper, you will know, mm -hmm. anytime you do anything, Right, right, right. Before it goes over, over right. it becomes like an automatic behavior. Yeah, yeah. So a person habit, who, it, who is it. just mm -hmm. smoking all the time is that part of the behavior that has to be broken along with the chemical dependency. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, some of the factory persons decided or recognized that they were making more money from the adolescent population choosing to use this. And it was advertised as something that was not harmful but research coming out now is showing that the steam is not only harming their tongues, their taste buds, their trachea, which is the point that goes down, the ear goes down, is, it, is also affecting their lungs as well, their bronchitis as well, mm -hmm. because we're not supposed to be breathing in that, that measure of steam. Steam is something, imagine you boiling water, mm -hmm. that heat is not supposed to be going down in our lungs like that, mm -hmm. and at that rate, in terms of person holding it in. Now, in Barbados, we are aware that there is what they call the vaping parties or the vaping gatherings where persons come and they do something known as tricks. So this is what is attract attracting the adolescent population. So they want to blow holes, they want to blow big clothes, they want to do these different things. And this is a big thing among our adolescent population. But we want to get the information out there that vaping is harmful. Mm -hmm. The chemicals, there are chemicals in the vape juice, even if it is zero nicotine or zero uh, marijuana juice, it still has different chemicals that you're taking inside of your body that will impact your brain and your body, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of effects, uh, you could do some more research, you don't have the time to go into all, mm -hmm. but you could do the research that there are more out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also want you to be careful about synthetic drugs as well. And if we can go back a little, uh, one of the things with the vaping, we mostly time when we hear about drug use and uh, reverence, mostly we think about boys. Mm -hmm. But yes. we are having both boys girls. and girls mm -hmm. who are choosing to use these things for a number of reasons. Uh, and one of the, the reasons when we look at research and we ask young people why they're using a drug, they always come out to help with stress. Mm -hmm. and stress in the home so you know hopefully this conversation can also give you some tips of how to bring some balance in your home mm -hmm. and, and some techniques to cope with stress my stress as well yes. I, I want to ask you though um, Mrs. Bourne about mm -hmm. the issue of brownies mm. um, because that seemed to be uh, I won't say a new way but a way that's getting uh, greater um, you know, visibility mm -hmm. in terms of the introduction of drugs to, to individuals. Oh my, you are absolutely correct. Persons are choosing to add to food products, um, marijuana and other drugs. And unfortunately, we are having reports where they are given these food products, whether in the form of brownies, cake, there are so many things now that <laughs> it has expanded, you know, and they're they're giving their friends the food product to eat. Yes. 
right? Without letting their friend know no. that they have a drug in it. So so then you do what? You trust your friend, you eat from your friend. A person consume this thing and then hours later, depending on how um, your whole digestive system works, always later you have persons that talk about they felt unwell for days. Because you have to remember in the digestive system, you're not just going to take one little paint jar up. What person would say their quantity they were normally small. You have a case where people are taking chunks at the same time. So you have no the blood passing down there by your intestine and continuously carrying that drug up to the brain. Right. So that person is in a constant state of being high. Whoa. So person, so imagine a person may be high for a couple of minutes and they come down with a smoke. But in a constant high for hours, that will throw a person's uh, entire system off. So you hear persons block out, persons vomiting persons behaving irrational and we are talking about both the adolescent as well as adults this has happened to mm -hmm. so yes families you have to be careful even and let your young people know to be careful who they choose to eat from because it's right. hardly a stranger mm -hmm. it is usually a friend or a close family member mm -hmm. that introduces person to these things mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it sounds as though there are uh, so many ways that persons can uh, be introduced to, to these substances mm -hmm. and one has to be very careful. Maybe that, that's, that's, that's the, uh, the, the first base in terms of families right. that we teach our children, those of us who have um, strong values that do not encourage or support drug use, mm -hmm. teach our children uh, the necessity of uh, being careful with who they, who they eat from mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and what they ingest and mm -hmm. even as they, as they go to the different functions because we can't we can't protect them forever, mm -hmm. but we need to be very careful in terms of of um, you know where they where they get their their food and, and, and be sure that it is it is bona fide. Mm -hmm. and the problem yes. there, um, Reverend Kelman, is that I'm eating for my friend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my friend doesn't for them it's fun. That's right. You know, so it means that they have to be very. You, in terms of that's serious. That's discretion. serious. That's yeah. serious. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, a piece of cake is a piece of cake. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I, I have no reason to, to, to doubt this piece, this piece of cake. Yeah. You know, um, and, and especially I, if the friend knows that this is sweet. Yes. They really, I think it has to do with ignorance. Yes. Ignorance of the side effects of the, the long term damage. But in tech as well, too, because you, yes. might, you might know that, that I'm a, I'm a Christian woman, a Christian yes, boy, a Christian absolutely. girl. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have a little, a little um, get together by, by your house, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you. So well, I'm gonna trick you know. Yeah. I'm gonna trick you know. I bring the cake. Bring the cake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? yeah. um, so, mm -hmm. so it means we have to be very, very careful, mm -hmm. even in terms of of what we eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, we're gonna come back again as we have a further discussion, exploration of some of these very critical, very critical eye-opening mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. um, viewers, back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum. Shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Okay, we're back with you. Um, <clears throat> perhaps we just have a few minutes left. Perhaps you can still invite someone to join with us. Um, Ms. Bourne, we, we want to continue our discourse. Uh, we talked earlier on about the mixing of drugs. You want to elaborate a little bit on that? Oh my, listen. Too many of our young people are out there, and parents don't know as well, who are mixing things there. There's something known as the purple drink, for instance, where we youthful know about, where they use various what seem harmless products around the house to get a buzz, right? You have young people who will take things that they're so creative that you would never think about mixing together. I don't even want to go into the list. That's right. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. To get a buzz, okay. right? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I want to encourage family members to have their eyes open for those signs and symptoms of possible drug use. Yes. You know, call the Nazarene Church, Reverend Kelman, Reverend Farley, for more information, NCSA, mm -hmm. they will guide you. Mm -hmm. It is important to understand the combination of what mm -hmm. is happening out there with your young persons. And why, and one of the things I want to mention to the family, why you're seeing such um, 
erratic swing moods, mood swings, sorry. So one minute your child just there, all lovely and everything, and then it's like if they just gone crazy and flip, sometimes what may be happening, you may have what you call a delay reaction to drugs. So the drug going up, remember it's circulating in the body. Mm -hmm. As when they think they are in a down, they either could be having a withdrawal from the drug mm -hmm. or they can be on the drug. So I tell a person, you have to be very careful when you are working with someone who you suspect to use a drug because you are not too sure. Most persons think when young people are behaving or adults do, when they are behaving in a manner that, um, you know, is outside of their normal behavior that perhaps um, they are high, but sometimes it could be that they're going through withdrawal of the drug too. Mm -hmm. So those are things we have to be very careful about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you, you, you mentioned earlier on the, the whole idea of um, the church. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the church seem exempted from these, but church is part of society. Mm -hmm. And how would the church impact you? I believe that the church stabilizes the community mm -hmm. and stabilizes nations. Yeah. And the church has a key role mm -hmm. to play as a race to this whole fight against substance use and abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, the church knows people personally in a way that we would never know persons. You have you are gatekeepers in the community, mm -hmm. and you have the ability to decide to plan some programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, work with the National Council of Substance Abuse. We have done it with some churches mm -hmm. like the Nazarene. We are very close uh, family with the Nazarene of getting programs out there. You know, we we are going to work, and it doesn't matter about denomination. Yes. We come in, we educate your church. Mm -hmm. And we can come in as well as train your people mm -hmm. about to set up programs mm -hmm. in your community to help those young people that may be using mm -hmm. drugs in your very church. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand the church is the hospital to the soul and to the spirit mm -hmm. as the, the normal hospital is for the yeah, physical the body. Right. So this thing about the church, you know, having all of these different types of people, that is exactly who Jesus said he came for. That's right. And that is who we want yeah. in the church as well, yeah. persons mm -hmm. who I'm using the drugs because uh, research also shows that a high success rate is linked, and you were saying this earlier, Reverend, to persons who tap into what they may call a higher power that we define as God. Mm -hmm. So it is important that the church decides this and let's normalize this thing. Mm -hmm. If there are persons in here that need help, you know, you throw out that line that says, we are not here to judge you. We are not here to judge your family. We are here to help you. Mm -hmm. And where NCSA can't come and help you, trust me, we, will, we want to partner with you. Right. We're excited to partner with yeah, you. Yeah, some of the things that you would do if a church invites you, give an example of some of the things you do. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's go a little bit. Uh, we had a program that we started, but... COVID, mm -hmm. where we started to invite church leaders to education program, and hopefully okay. that will back up and running now the mm -hmm. nation open up. Mm -hmm. So we first want to get leaders educated yes. about what is happening in the society. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, pastors and leaders, we are in our own bubble, and we have so much things managing that we don't get time to listen to the music children are listening to. We're not getting time to go and you know, really say and investigate what is happening in the families in our churches. Mm -hmm. So that is the first step, education. Mm -hmm. The second step is teaching and showing you the different signs and symptoms to look for. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, I love to give leaders information on how you can get help. Yeah. So the it's resources important. out yeah. there that you can mm -hmm. tap into because you mm -hmm. cannot do all by yourself. You are just a past of That's one right. human person, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So we want to know the resources that we can tap into to get help. And then from there, if the church has individuals and resources that we can work with and come into the community and say, let's work together, mm -hmm. let's develop a program, mm -hmm. and then train the church how to sustain that program, those are things that I see. I say would love to partner with partner, the church. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as I said, the yeah. church is key in the community. But, but I, think, I think the key reality here, though, Reverend Farley and uh, Mrs. Bourne, is the establishing of a of a process, mm -hmm. right? It's not an event, mm -hmm. right? There has to be mm -hmm. a commitment over over over, over time, mm -hmm. you know, um, to stay in there because issues of substance abuse and, and recovery um, is a is a, is a very, yeah, and, and it can be very difficult as well. Yes, yes. Uh, it can be very convoluted, yeah. And therefore, there has to be that commitment. So, so even in terms of Nazarene, this, this doesn't have to be for every church. It could be a general 
program where other churches buy into it, you know, mm -hmm. um, in some central location where by, you know, no one person is settled with that, with that responsibility. So, because yeah. it, it, is, it is a very challenging undertaking, yeah. but very necessary yeah. mm -hmm. because of our, of our uh, social dynamics. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. But do you think that sometimes we as leaders may have our heads buried in the sand when it comes to drug related situations? Uh, some may, mm -hmm. but some. I, I believe some may just generally don't know. Don't know. They don't okay. know. Some might just say, oh, yes, he's on drugs. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the points I wrote here is I want persons to understand that drug use is everyone's business. Yeah. We tend to say, oh, it's not my family, so I'm sure. not getting in. Mm -hmm. But I like to teach, when I'm doing my teaching, I show the systemic impact. What individual deciding that they're using drugs, mm -hmm. treatment has to come from somewhere, money comes from somewhere, it's called taxes. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, where the gas is coming from us, right? Mm -hmm. Who are? Mm -hmm. So there's a ripple effect then that is happening mm -hmm. if a person chooses to use drugs. Mm -hmm. If it multiplies, the community becomes unsafe yeah. in some cases, especially depending on the drug, because mm -hmm. we know that crime and drugs are linked very That's closely, right? That's right. right. Mm -hmm. We know that um, sexual, risky sexual behaviors and drug use are linked, right? Mm -hmm. So persons then may be in a case that they, because they open up their cell to unprotect their sex, they may end up in HIV, they may end up in mm -hmm. so many different mm -hmm. STIs that are out there, they may have unwanted pregnancy. There's so many different things that can happen with drugs being the center mm -hmm. of it. So mm -hmm. we all have to come on board. Violence. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. You talked also earlier about the whole idea of um, some types of music. Oh. Yeah. Um, any relation to drug abuse? You want to elaborate? There? Oh yes, yeah. That was during the break. We were saying that <laughs> one of the things we notice is that most music that persons listen to promotes some form of drug use, including other anti behaviors. Mm -hmm. But zooming in or whatever drug it is, you will find whatever is released or whatever the young people are listening to at that time will be what the persons will, will trade at that time. So we had songs that promote every person need a bottle, then the next thing you know, nobody buying a drink and share no more, everyone has to have a bottle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about a, a beer, I'm talking about big, big bottles, right? <laughs> you might have a case as well where they're promoting uh, the white lady, mm -hmm. white lady is cocaine. And something I want parents to know, our families to know, uh, reverence is that they have to learn the terms. The terms, yeah. So you mm -hmm. hear that young person say, want some jam, and we thinking they're going to get some guava jam for the bread, mm -hmm. not knowing they want some Jamaica weed. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, they might say they want some gold, not knowing you, they want some Colombian gold weed. You have to know yes, the, the terms, terms yeah. even as leaders, mm -hmm. so that when you speak to your youth, mm -hmm. that you speak the language that they understand, yeah. and when they speak, you understand, and you mm -hmm. can bring you know, that level of education yeah. in the mm -hmm. in the church mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And those numbers again, you have a number you can contact. Oh yes, you can call us at five three five N C S A. National Council of Substance Abuse. Yes, please. You're there to serve the community. Oh, we are ready. Thank you. You're very and thank you for your spirited presentation. Thank you. <laughs> uh Kelly? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Almighty God we again Thank you for this time of sharing. And uh, our desire, Father, is that families will grow and become stronger. Pray God even now against uh, the impact of substance abuse in our nation. And I pray God today that someone, some families would have heard Lord this program and would have been challenged, oh God, to, uh, to change and to create a, a more harmonious environment, one that is, uh, doesn't have uh, substance abuse as its focus, Lord. I, I pray, God, that today that someone would have heard this message and make a commitment, O oh Father, to being free of that substance. Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks again, Mrs. Bourne. Well, viewers, thank you so much for Share with us today. May God bless you and those persons who might have been impacted by drug abuse. There's help. <laughs>